Esther chapter 9. Now we're going to see from out of the tribulation period in time the millennium. The Antichrist, the enemy of the Jews, the Jews' enemy, Haman has been put off. He's gone. Cast in the lake of fire, not in Esther, but the book of Revelation, the true Antichrist. Now we're going to see Israel in peace. We're going to see Israel, Mordecai, type of Jesus Christ, Esther, the bride of God, the nation of Israel. Now the twelfth month, Twelve is the number of the children of Israel. That is the month of Adar and the thirteenth day of the same. Now usually thirteen is a bad number of rebellion, but here it comes the good number. But the thirteenth day is the day that the people have been told, go kill the Jews. And we read that since Haman has been dead, the king has, heard, has had Esther and Mordecai write a letter saying, Jews, you can defend yourselves. Now the Jews are not going to defend themselves at the seventh year of the tribulation period. Jesus Christ is going to come and take over the battle with the church behind him. So, Adar, the 13th day of the same, when the king's commandment, Esther's and Mordecai's, and this decree drew near to be put to execution. That's the only time that word shows up. Execution in kind of funny place because guess what's going to happen? People are going to die. The act of execution, the word only shows up when people die. In, that, in the day that the enemies of the Jews hoped. That's the first time hope shows up. And it's a reference of the Jewish people being freed from the world. When Jesus Christ comes back and divides the nation from sheep and goats and spreads the goats off in the lake of fire, that's what the Jews have been hoping for. That's what they wanted Jesus to do. They didn't want Jesus to have a cross, though they put him there. They wanted Jesus to come in and wipe out the Babylonians, wipe out the Assyrians, wipe out the Romans. Wipe out everybody that's against them and set them as the millennial kingdom. Satan had them full, like he, like Satan had uh, with Jesus on the mountain uh, on the uh, on the mount. We're questioning Jesus. Jesus do this. Jesus do that. Jesus do this. Yeah, Jesus is going to do it, but not at that time. Jesus came to suffer and die first. Though it was turned to the contrary, the Jews had rule over them that hated them. Well, Christ will have the rule. And John chapter 1 says, He came unto His own, His own received them not. Remember, Jesus Christ is a Jewish person, man. And the Jews gathered themselves together in their cities, throughout all the provinces of King Ahasuerus, to lay hand on such as sought their hurt. Haman's letter. And no man could withstand them, for the fear for the fear of them fell upon all the people. Jews are ferocious people. And when they got a mighty God that, that defends them, and all the rulers of the governors I mean, all, all the rules of the provinces and the lieutenants and the deputies and the officers of the king helped the Jews. Is that a picture of the nation that's going to help? But these know what they're doing. When Jesus pulls forth the sheep nation, they don't have any idea what they're doing. Officers of the king helped the Jews because the fear of Mordecai fell upon them. Mordecai's been given power. <clears throat> the fear of the Lord Jesus Christ at the second advent. When they see Jesus coming, they're going to take their idols, their gods, their images, and cast them into the holes of the rocks. They're going to please let the rocks fall on us rather than face the Son of God. 
And if the rapture would happen today, and the tribulation would begin now, seven years, there are people who have been preached to and, and given gospel tracts, and they defy, they mock the, the preaching of the gospel. Yet at the end of the seven years, when that very same Jesus we preach comes, they ain't going to be mocking at that point. <clears throat> For Mordecai was great in the king's house. And his fame went out throughout all the provinces. For the for this man, Mordecai, waxed greater and greater like Joseph. Like Joseph. Thus the Jews smote all their enemies with the stroke of the sword. That would be Jesus with the sword coming out of his mouth at the second advent. And slaughter and destruction. Jesus at the second advent and did what they would unto those that hated them. Jesus. We have switched from the Jews to Jesus. And in Shushan the palace the Jews slew and destroyed 500 men. And in Parsha Hedeza and in Dalphim and Asphaza and Partha and Adela and Arthaza and Parthmishtha and Arthiel and Aridai and Vasjadith, the ten sons, Gentile number, of Haman. There are ten kings in the, in the tribulation period Daniel and the book of Revelation. Quinky dinky, huh, isn't it? That Haman has the same number of sons as there will be kings under the Antichrist. Need to read Daniel and read the book of Revelation. The son of Hamadetha, the enemy of the Jew. Thessalonians chapter 4, I forget it's first, uh, first Thessalonians or second Thessalonians. Slew they. Now here's an interesting note. It's going to be repeated. But on the spoil lay they not their hand. The king's established decree last night was you can defend yourself, you can destroy, you can kill, and you can lay upon the spoil in the prey. And it's recorded by the Holy Spirit many times in chapter 9. They kill, they defend themselves. The spoil, the armor, the money they're carrying, the, the food in their house, all the stuff they can carry away, they leave it. It pictures Jericho. Except for Achan. And they have been given liberty by the king to go ahead and do it all. Now, on the account of chapter 8 and chapter 9, we must establish the fact for the Jewish people, they don't kill anybody just because they want to. The decree of chapter 8 and the practice in verse 9, the, the decree is, you're going to defend yourself. All these people that die under the Jews are ones that are going to assault the Jews. When Jesus comes back and that flame of sword comes out of his mouth, not everybody's going to burn up. There will be Jews waiting for, well, I shouldn't say waiting for Jesus, but there will be Jews that Jesus will pick up on the way coming to Jerusalem as Joshua did. And we are told there are sheep nations that will go into the millennium because of their help to the Jewish people. And when we read Joel chapter 2, we as soldiers of Jesus Christ, you know, no one's going to hurt us. We're going to be leaping over the walls and through the windows. And when you match that with Joshua and Jericho, there's only one woman waiting over the walls and through a window. And she had a red scarlet thread. And I believe she's even mentioned in Matthew. So the ten sons of Haman, the son of Hamaditha, the enemy of the Jews, slew they, but on the spoil lay they not their hand. They didn't take nothing. On that day, the number of those that were slain in Shushan, the palace, was brought before the king. So they counted. And the king said to Esther the queen, The Jews have slain and destroyed 500 men in Shushan the palace. And the ten sons of Haman 
what have they done in the rest of the kingdom's province? So you sue 510 men. What else? What else is going on? What have they done in the rest of the king's province? Now, what is thy petition? You know, you realize he says that Queen Esther comes up to him and she's afraid for his life and he pulls out the golden scepter. He said, what shall I do for you? She says, oh, if we can have this wine banquet with Haman. And in the midst of the wine banquet, the king looks at her and says, Queen, what shall I do for you? Half the king. He says, let Haman come again and let us have this wine. And then the third time, the king says, Esther, what shall I do for you? And then she spills out the, the plot, the evil deeds of Haman. And then she comes before the king. She's falling down at his feet, weeping and crying. And the king says, what shall I do for you, Esther? And she says, can we reverse this law? Now, here again, now what shall I do for you? Uh, what is thy petition? It shall be granted unto thee. And what is thy request further? It shall be done. Notice the king forgot to say something. Verse 12. Half the, Half the kingdom. Why did he not? Because he knows how faithful Esther is. Is that your character? Does your boss, does, does your, your family, may, hey, do they know, hey, you know what? I can count. I may not like him. But you know what? That, that person's reputable. I can count on him. And he's not going to take advantage. Look how many times we, we have looked at what what's your petition as now it's going to the point is I trust you. That's a good faithful marriage Esther has. Again, match Ruth and Esther together in Esther and Ruth. Remarkable women. And then said Esther. If it please the king, let it be granted to the Jews, not for her, the Jews, which are in Shishan to do tomorrow, as according unto this day's decree, protect themselves. It ain't over. Let Haman's ten sons be hanged upon the gallows, or gallows. And the king commanded so to be done, and the decree was given to Shishan, and they hang Haman's ten sons. Revelation 13. The ten heads. The ten kings. Revelation 13. 13. That's an interesting number. For the Jews that were in Chichen gathered themselves together on the 14th day, also in the month of Adar. Revelation 13 of those ten kings are on the 13th day of Esther. Coincidence? I don't think so. Also the month Adar and slew 300 men of Shishan, but on the prey they laid not their hand. You know, there could have been a man who, who was going to kill a Jew, and that guy could have had a sack of gold on him, a money belt of gold, or diamond rings, and they stayed on that body according to the Jews. Now, someone else, a Gentile, may have stole it. But as far as the Jews, he... But the other Jews that were in the king's province gathered themselves together and stood for their lives. Protection. Stood for their lives and had rest from their enemies and slew their, fo their foes Seventy and five thousand, but they laid not their hand on the prey. <laughs> the Holy Spirit wants us to get that. The Jews did not steal. It violates their commandment. You say, well, thou shalt not steal. I mean, I think I, thou shalt not kill. Jehovah, we, did, we can't go to war because God said thou shalt not kill. What are the Jews doing? They're killing. They're not stealing. So there's a difference between killing the Ten Commandments and there's a difference between stealing. And God's allowed it because it's for protection. 
And when you're out in the battlefield and that guy over there has got a rifle or something, he wants to kill you, you are liable to protect yourself. You're not to be a fool and stand there and say, oh, go ahead and shoot me and we'll get it over. Jonah. And the government calls you to go to war, Romans 13, you're to go to war. And if you don't and proclaim, well, they're not a church, pro proclaim religious freedom of thou shalt not kill, I don't have to go to war. You're going to find yourself guilty before God one day. And God's going to call up every Christian soldier for the government, for the cause of the government, and have you slain, Mr. Jehovah Witness, why they went to war and you didn't. And there are many Christian soldiers who went to war for a nation that was battling wrong. But their nation called them to go into service, and they did. Is it wrong or right that the Jewish people are killing people? If they don't, they will be killed. And then what are you going to do? Thou shalt not kill. What are you going to do when Jesus comes and with that flame of a sword of his fire that comes out of his mouth, he is slain his foes before. What are you going to say at that point? Jesus, stop! Thou shalt not kill! You're going to be a fool. That'd be almost bad as someone at the great white throne judgment. God, judge not that ye be judged. And I have a feeling some people are going to say that. On the 13th day of the month, Adar, and on the 14th day of the same, rested day. There's a millennial rest. And made it a day of feasting. That's the first time that word shows up. That's what the millennial rest is going to be. There's the tabernacle. There's the priest. There's the offering. There is David, their prince. There is Jesus, the king of Israel, sitting on David's throne. There is the apostles. There are the Christians. There are the people that helped them in the tribulation. And all their enemies are put away. And like Daniel, they're laying there with a lion out in the field. Petting the lion with their little lamb that they're taking care of. And no worries of falling asleep. And Amos says that one guy is going to be planning... And going and planting and planting. One guy is going to break up the ground and gonna, then it's going to be planting. And the guy right behind him is going to be picking the fruit. The curse is removed off the earth. The Jew is laying in his land as Ezekiel, as many of the prophets speak about, in complete outer peace. We read in Ezekiel today as a family. My wife would love they're going to lay out in the wilderness, lay outdoors. And there will be no mosquitoes. You will not need insecticide. You will not need to burn any of those little candles to keep the bugs away. And if a bear comes into your camp, you won't need to worry. He's just going to cover it up and just snuggle right up against you. Try that today. It won't happen. We're under a curse right now. Millennial rest. After what? After the enemies and after the Antichrist has been put to death. And those ten kings. When Jesus comes and defeats the enemies of the Jews. Now I feel sorry for those people who say, God's all finished with the Jews. <laughs> no, he's not. But the Jews that were at Shishan assembled, assembled together on the 13th day thereof. And on the 14th day thereof. And on the 15th day of the same, they rested. Count that with the millennial rest. Count that as what were they supposed to do on the Sabbath? Rest. And made it a day of feasting and gladness. That's what the millennium is going to be. The day of feasting and gladness. Therefore the Jews of the villages that dwelt in the unwalled towns made the 14th day of the month Adar a day of gladness, millennium, feasting, the millennium, and a good day, and send portions one to another. Gifts. They're giving every. They're gift giving. And it's not Christmas. It's not the birthday. In the millennium, they're going to be giving. They're going to be giving. 
Then they're going to be happy. We're going to be happy. And Mordecai wrote these things and sent letters unto all the Jews. This is the third letter sent out in the book of Esther. First time, kill them. Second time, protect yourself. Third time, rejoice and glorify and let's have feastings and gladness. Unto all the Jews that were in all the provinces of King Asahurus, both nigh and far. So this letter goes out to everyone. Addressed to the Jews. All the addressing in the millennium will be for the Jewish people. Now there will be Gentiles there. To establish this among them, that they should keep the 14th day of the month Adar, and in the 15th day of the same, yearly. And this is late in our calendar time. As the days where the Jews rested from their enemies, millennium, and the month which was churned unto them from sorrow to joy, millennium, and from mourning unto a good day, millennium. That millennium is called the seventh day of rest. The, the day and ages and the dispensations are according to the God's creation. The first day, the second day, the third day. That seventh day was a day of rest. That is the millennial period on this earth. When the curse is removed. That they should make them days of feasting and joy. And of sending portions one to another. Uh oh. And gifts to the poor. You know, people are still going to sin in the millennium. And I guess there's going to be poor in the millennium. Jesus said, you'll have the poor always with you. You're not going to wipe out with socials the poor people. You're not going to give every poor man. No, you're not. Not when God says you're not going to do it. And the Jews undertook to do as they had begun. And as Mordecai had written unto them. Because Haman the son of Hamaditha, the Agadite, the enemy of the Jews, knows how that keeps saying, had devised against the Jews to destroy them, Antichrist, and, and had cast pur, that is, this is what pur means, to lot. And consume them and destroy them. They cast lots. They had a gamble. What day should we do this? That's called per. When, but when Esther came before the king. And commanded by letters that his wicked device. Which he devised against the Jews. Should return upon his own head. And that he and his son should be hanged on the gallows. Wherefore they called these days Purim or lots that's what Purim means our lives were dependent upon the lots and I understand I'm not Jewish but I understand every year at Purim the book of Esther is read in the synagogue and whenever I, I am told that Esther or Mordecai yay all right, yay! And then when it, when Haman's name comes up, boo his boo in the tabernacle and in the synagogue. That's what I understand, and that this is a time of great feasting. Man, they're going to have a greater feast one day when they're King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the King of the Jews. Will give them that land they want. They do that in America today. Well, when they have it in, in Israel. With the peace of God. Glory. And they call these days Purim after the name Pur. Therefore, for all the words of this letter. And of that which they had seen concerning this matter. Which had come unto them. The Jews ordained. So here is a feast that's still practiced today 
And in their book, they have Esther. It begins in the book of Esther, this feast. And God has honored it. God does not honor uh, uh, Hanukkah. That's not a Bible feast. That's a celebration over some group of people. And then some people say that th those books are in the Bible and they're not in the canon Bible unless you're Roman Catholic. But when you look at the celebration of, of Purim, that's in the Bible. The Jews ordained and took upon them, upon their seed, their children, upon all such as joined themselves unto them, the Gentiles. This is a Jewish and Gentile feast. Who were those Gentiles being in the millennium? The sheep nations. Oh, I want to thank you guys so much for protecting me. We, that, that Antichrist was going to do us in. I was going to die of typhoid fever. I was going to die in that prison. But you came. Come. And the Bible says they're going to say, Come, let me bring you to our king. Let, let, let me bring you to the Messiah. What a glorious day that's going to be. And join themselves unto them, so as it should not fail, that they would keep these two days according to their writing, and according to their appointed time every year. And they do that. That these days should be remembered and kept throughout, I think throughout, yep, throughout every generation. 2019 is going to happen again, Lord willing. Every family, every province, every city. Even if you're not in Israel. Are you in New York? Are you in South Africa? Are you in Germany? Keep it. Like the Passover. But the Passover, you're supposed to go to Jerusalem. Every city. And that these days of Purim should not fail among the Jews. Nor the memorial of them perish from their seed. Christ will bring it back. Then Esther the queen, the daughter of Abihail, and Mordecai the Jew, wrote all authority. That's the first time that word shows up. And to confirm this second letter of Purim, two letters. And he sent the letters unto all the Jews. <laughs> I would be Mordecai. Because it says Esther the queen, the daughter of Bilhi, and Mordecai the Jew. And if you read that, okay, it says he sent the letter. Esther writing with Mordecai, but look also what, how you can read it too. Then Esther the queen, the daughter of Bilhi, he died. And Mordecai, Mordecai adopted her. So they both in union write this letter and both acknowledging both her father and her adopted father. And he sent the letters unto all the Jews to the 127 provinces of the kingdom of Asher. How many times that's been said? That has something to do with something. I don't know what it is. With the words of peace and truth. Who does that sound like? To confirm these days of Purim in their times appointed, what time they're to be, according as Mordecai the Jew and Esther the Queen had enjoined, first time that word shows up, and enjoined them, and as they had decreed for themselves and for their seed, the matters of the fastings, first time that word shows up, and their cry, <laughs> we're going to die. And the decree of Esther confirmed these matters of Purim. And it was written in a book. Well, guess what book that was written in? Going. And I said, every time Purim comes up, they read the book of Esther and they cheer Esther on. They cheer Mordecai on and they boo and hiss. Haman. And the old movies took over and, and, and counterfeited that. You know, when the villain comes on the screen and all that. It's original in the Bible. It comes from the Bible. One more chapter left in that.